Hello everyone. What I wanted to do today is kind of go through a brief explanation of electrically how I imagine that this one wheel is going to work. Um, we're also going to look at the components that I've already got on hand and the components that I'm expecting to come in. So just a quick explanation of this diagram. What I've done here is I've broken down each primary component onto its own sheet of paper. And that sheet of paper includes what connections are coming into the component, what connections are going out, and how those connections are being done. So in cases where it's a soldered or solid connection, we're just running straight through. In other places where we're using a specific connector, we've actually noted the connector that we're going to be using. And this is to help us guide ourselves as we start to do our design and assembly. So we're going to start with what we've already got. So around this end, we have our power supply which is a 36 volt, 4.4 amp hour hoverboard battery. Uh, this is what we've been playing with over the last few days. We've determined that we can successfully charge these without the hoverboard motherboard needing to be included, which really makes everything a lot easier. Um, the motherboard, the battery, which we'll live over here, is connected to the charging port, which is what we've created here. The charging port uses a T60 connector to connect to the battery. And on the other end, it has what is commonly referred to as an aviation plug. This is a three pin version. Um, I know there is a formal name for these. I don't actually know what it is, but in my experience, and when you search for them on Amazon, they are just called aviation plugs. Um, that aviation plug was connected there. Ultimately, we'll splice this wiring to match the diagram. We have the charger, which we now know works, even though we did horrible, horrible things to it. The charger connects to that aviation plug to charge the battery. Um, the charger takes 120 volts to 240 volts in from the wall. It outputs 42 volts at two amps, and it can monitor the battery as it charges it. We'll put that there, we've got that. After the charging port, but before we get to the meat of the circuitry, we're going to have a fuse. Um, and in this case, we're going to use a 30 amp automotive blade fuse. The reason we're going to use these is because I have got a stack of them in the building. They're reliable, they're easy to find, and we don't have to go out and buy anything. So that'll be our 30 amp fuse. The next thing in here is going to be a uh, what's commonly called a sparkless soft switch. Uh, these are available for purchase from various places that do DIY skateboard builds. We're trying to keep the cost of this build down. So what we're gonna do for this is I have actually a really cool light up switch that I took out of a, another project. And then I have some transistors and some MOSFETs. These MOSFETs are rated at 60 volts uh, and 34 amps. So we're gonna see if we can use these to build a soft switch from scratch. That's gonna be a really cool project when we get to it. Now after the switch, we're gonna get into the meat of the circuit of what's going on here. And this is expressed in two primary components, a VECS and an IMU. A VECS is something that I'm just learning about now, but it's essentially it is an open source project to make a smart electronic speed controller. Um, what that means is it is a speed controller system. There's a few different manufacturers that make them. They range in price uh, based on quality. The one that I'm looking at is about $70. It's at the lower end. Um, but what's neat about it is it comes with a software tool that allows you to program a lot of the different functions of the ECS and choose different apps that you want the ECS to run. The app that we're going to choose to run is specifically for a balance board. And that app will integrate with what's called an IMU. Um, IMU is an inertial measurement device. It is a device that is used to actually sense where the, the, the actual sensor itself is in space and how it's moving. Your phone has one of these. They're commonly called accelerometers, but a lot of them have gyros in them or other different forms of sensing motion. Now, in hunting around hammer space here, I was actually able to find the correct type of IMU that we need. Um, so we're going to use one of those. The IMU is going to have four lines that are going to need to connect from it to the VECS. Uh, so we're going to use a JST connector 
which are one of these. You can get these packs on Amazon. I have a couple of them, but it's basically a solderless connector joint. The um, BECS will already have a male header populated on it. So we will need to create the female version on the cable to go with this accelerometer. Um, then this accelerometer, importantly, will have to be mounted securely within the board. Because if this is flopping around, then it's not going to get a good idea of balance and it won't know how to accelerate when to break. Now the VECS on the other side of it here is going to be connected to our actual one wheel. Um, the one wheel is one of the few components that obviously I didn't have around the shop. Um, so I've ordered this in from China. Uh, the order has been out for about a week now. I don't really know when it's going to show up because shipping times have become unpredictable. Um, I'll put a link to the description in the description to the wheel that I ordered, but uh, this wheel cost me $109 plus $49 in shipping. It's essentially a great big heavy piece of magnets and metal, and it's being shipped in the time of a pandemic at a moment when there's not a lot of air travel going back and forth, so shipping prices have risen quite a bit. The wheel itself has a whole series of connections back to the VECS. The three primary connections, A, B, and C, are going to actually be the coils that are energized to rotate and break the wheel. Um, those are going to be fairly substantial connections, and that's where current is flowing either from the battery to the wheel to provide acceleration or force, or during braking, the VECS actually gives us the option to back charge the battery and do regenerative braking. We'll experiment with that more once we get all of the parts in and we're able to start working on them. Um, the other set of connections down here on the bottom of the page, which are also going to be the J, uh, JST connector, are the connections for the three Hall effect sensors inside the wheel. Um, there's three Hall effect wires and there's going to be two additional wires, one to provide power to the Hall effect sensors and one to ground the Hall effect sensors. Now, what those do is they allow the VS, VECS to know where in its rotation cycle it is at any given time. And that's how the ECS knows which coils to trig in, trigger in sequence to know whether to accelerate, whether to brake, whether to go forward, whether to go backwards. This has been a really simple explanation of what we're gonna do today. Um, my hope is that once all these components come in, we'll assemble everything on the table. We'll get it working as a proof of concept that's just all laid out, not built into any specific form yet. Um, but because we're waiting for both the wheel and the VECS to come in, the next task we're going to work on here is creating this sparkless soft switch, uh, which is going to involve a little bit of circuitry, um, possibly the design of a PCB. Once again, you can buy them but this is going to be more amusing to do ourselves. Thank you very much, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. This has been the electrical overview of how I'm intending to build this one wheel.